Hi guys, welcome back to the Apothecary. It's Katie again, and our second video um, I've got is about how Chinese formulas work. Um, so I appreciate all the questions. You guys are really keeping me on my toes. Um, I will make a disclaimer at the beginning of this video. Please, please, please do not try to put together Chinese formulas um, at home if you are not um, a Chinese herbalist, please seek out a Chinese herbalist to do this for you. Um, herbs are just like medicine. They are medicine. Um, and they are, they can be hazardous if they're not given in the proper dosage, um, just like regular mes medicine. So please, um, if you're interested in Chinese herbs, my information is down below. It's also in the about section um, of the YouTube channel. So check me out. Um, I can also help you find an herbalist in your area. Um, but please don't try this at home because there, there's definitely a window, um, that's safe. Uh, and it, it varies from herb to herb. Um, and I will show you, this is the Chinese Materia Medica. Um, this is by Bensky and my God, it's heavy. Um, there's about, I think there's 3000, Chinese herbs in this book alone. Um, to the best of my knowledge, there's about 5,000 Chinese herbs. Um, I tend to work with bulk herbs, which is what we're looking at right here uh, on this parchment paper. Um, but I will show you over here that they can come in different types. So we've got, um, they can come in pill forms. We've got pills here. Um, we have a tincture here. This is Dispel Invasion. Um, um, bulk herbs can be ground up into a powder form called granules. And I'm sorry, I don't have any granules to show you, but it would just be this ground up. Um, we do have some topicals. Anyone who does martial arts might, might actually recognize this. This is Dit Da Jiao. It's for when you knock the crap out of each other. Um, it's for bruising on the skin. Um, and then there's other types of topicals, um, like creams and plasters. So those are the main types of herbs. Um, we also have something that you might not have seen before. This is a Chinese herb cooker. And if you guys are interested, leave me a comment below. We can certainly, um, make an, uh, herbal formula in the cooker so that you guys can see it. Uh, my method of preference is is the slow cooker, and we'll we'll get to that in just a minute. So, um, the next question that I was asked was, what is the difference between Chinese herbs and Western herbs? So, Chinese herbalism is very very different from Western herbalism, in the sense that Chinese formulas are very very sophisticated formulas, and they're just that they are formulas. They are almost never given out as single herbs. Um, they are uh, constructed in such a way, formulas are constructed in such a way, the architecture of a formula, um, so that they work like a symphony. They work together. Um, there are three types of herbs in a formula. Um, there is a chief herb, and that is... Um, the main herb, the driving herb in the formula, it drives the direction of the formula. Um, the second type of herb is called a deputy and the deputies assist the main herb um, and sort of um, harmonize, not harmonize, but um, sort of tone down the harshness of the chief herb. And then you've got a third uh, type of herb and it is called an envoy and that herb harmonizes all the rest of the herbs if they're a little harsh like futsa aconite the envoy would um make sure that everyone's playing nice that you're not getting an upset stomach or or something else from the from the um harshness of the herb so um the other way that chinese herbs are viewed is that they're sort of viewed in in terms of physics, um, and we aren't really thinking of Chinese herbs in a biomedical constituent type of way, but we're, we're looking at Chinese herbs in, 
in, in certain types, like the flavor of the herb, the nature of the herb, and what direction the herb is driving the chi in a, in a certain meridian or, or many meridians, depending on what the formula is. So this particular formula actually comes from China. Thank you very much, Chen, for translating this into English. This is a, a flu prevention formula. If you're interested, again, please message me um, and do not do this at home. Um, I'm not going to give out the dosages because, like I said, dosages are different for everyone. Um, but I will talk a little bit about each herb and, and what it does. So this first herb here is Mai Men Dong. It's Ophiopogon. It's in the Totify Yin category, and it's slightly cold. It's sweet and slightly bitter tasting. It goes to the heart, lung, stomach, and spleen. Uh, and when I when I talk about that, that's the meridians that it goes through. Um, this second herb is Tai Zi Shen, Scutellaria root. It is in the Tonify Qi category. It's neutral in temperature. It tastes sweet, slightly bitter. It goes to the lung and spleen meridians. The third herb here is Fang Feng, Lettiborrelia root. It is in the release exterior category. It's slightly warm. It goes to the bladder the liver, spleen, and lung meridians, and it, it has an acrid and sweet taste. Um, this one's very interesting. This is Gansau licorice root. It is in the Tonify Chi category. This is raw um, licorice root right here. It goes to the bladder, liver, I'm sorry. It goes to um, actually all of the meridians, but specifically heart, lung, spleen, and stomach. Um, but I wanted to show you the difference between a raw herb and a pan fried or honey fried herb because it will change the nature of an herb. Um, and this is why this is why it's so important that you want to get somebody who has had the proper training. So this is zhir gansau. The zhir means that it is honey fried or dry fried and it changes the nature of the herb. So when it is um, zhir or honey fried, it goes from being neutral in its raw form to being warm in nature. So there's the two, same herb, um, two different um, natures. So sometimes you would use the raw herb, sometimes you would use, use the zhir. Okay, um, we're gonna move on to Huang Chi astragalus root. Everybody likes this one because it looks like a tongue depressor. Um, it's in the Tonify Chi category. It's slightly warm. Um, it goes to the lung and spleen meridians, and it sort of has a sweet taste to it. Okay, this one's interesting also. This is Wu Weitza, Shisandra fruit. It's in the stabilize and bind category. It's very expensive right now, um, and it astringes. It means that it holds everything together. Um, it is warm in nature. It goes to the heart, kidney, lung, and all five zong meridians, and it sort of has like a sweet and sour taste to it. Um, the next herb is Kangzu. This is black attractive lotus rhizome. It's in the aromatic transform damp category. It's warm in temperature um, It's and it goes to the spleen and stomach, sometimes the heart depending on the formula. Um, and this is acrid, bitter, and aromatic in flavor. Um, so next we have Baiju, this is white attractive lotus. So we have both black and white attractive lotus in this formula. Um, this is in the Totify Chi category. It's warm. It goes to the spleen and stomach meridians, and the taste is bitter and sweet. Okay. So next we have Ku Jing Ren. This is apricot kernel. It is in the transform phlegm and stop cough category. Um, it stops coughing and wheezing. It is slightly warm in nature. It goes to the lung and large intestine meridians, and it is bitter, sometimes sweet. And last but not least, we have Sheng Ma. This is black cohosh. Um, it is in the release exterior category. Uh, it is slightly cold. It goes to the large intestine, lung, spleen, and stomach meridians. Um, and the taste is sort of sweet and acrid, okay. So there's our formula. Like we said, the jargon salad is not in this formula. Um, I just wanted to show you that. 
So what do we do? You have this big bag of herbs. What do you do with it when you get home? This is a lot of herbs. Um, so typically you would throw herbs into a crock pot with eight to nine cups of water, set it on low um, overnight. And you're really looking for about seven cups when you're finished um, to get you through a week. So you would be taking half a cup in the morning and half a cup at night. Like I said, this formula is slightly different. So we're looking for more like 13 to 14 cups. This has got a lot of herbs in it. Um, so we're taking slightly more than half a cup with this particular formula. Um, so I can sh also show you the finished product. Once you, uh, once it is cooked overnight in the crock pot, you're gonna strain all of the herbs out and, and throw them away. And you're left with, ta-da, your finished product here. So here is your tea, your herbal formula. You're, you're not um, warming this entire canister up every single time you would take um, about half a cup, add a few drops of hot water to it, um, and then take that that way. Because if you continue to um, heat and co and cool it, it will damage the formula. Also, it's really important to remember that you want to uh, the container that you use is important. You want to either use plastic containers or um, glass uh, mason jars. But if you are using Anything with a metal lid, you want to have some sort of um, protective barrier, like a cling wrap or um, um, plastic wrap or something in between the metal lid and the container. Um, so that should last you about a week. Um, I love your questions. We've got a second part to this video, which is um, how do you Reiki your herbs? So look for that. Um, I know that this was a lot of information, so um, that will just be a second video and I will go through that step by step. So thank you very much. Like the channel, like the video and keep up with the questions um, and I will try to keep up with the videos. All right. So we will post this one and the second one in just a moment. Take care.